Hey, it's Don, the Auction Professor. Today we're going to go and show you some more items that we sold. Just like last time, I'm just going to show you the cheaper items. Everything I'm going to show you right now, I paid a dollar or less for. Literally, nothing more than a dollar in every item I'm showing you. These are just from the last week. Just a small assortment of some of the items that we sold. Let's hop over there right now and show you some of these items. So here we are with the first item. Most records I get, I pay a dollar or less. If I'm picking them from an assortment, I usually pay a dollar. If I'm buying in bulk, I can pay as little as a penny or two a record. This one cost me a dollar. I took 30 on it. Arthur Fields is the person that this one sold for. Like on most of these early vintage records, there's somebody else on the other side. Now this is Billy Jones and Ernst Hare on the back, too tired. Nice, decent record. 30 bucks is fine with me. Again, I paid a dollar for this one. Now here is a label or a poster stamp. I'm not sure honestly which this is. It's small, it's about an inch or so tall. It did sell for $63.75. I picked up several of these for $2, so have about a dollar or less into each one of these. Now here's a postcard again, dollar a piece. $17.50 this one sold for. It's nothing really fancy or from a great area. It's not a real photo or anything along that line. I still made over 15 bucks on this one. Now here's a Fago label. Now I picked up a whole huge assortment from a distributor's office at a going out of business sale, I guess you would say. Uh, it hadn't been used for soda for a very long time, but many of these items were still in the location. So I bought them all up. I bought a whole bunch of these, and we've been selling them on average from 8 to 10, 12, 15 bucks a piece. So nice, good one here. Now 8 by 10 photos. I sold several of these to the same person. I took 30 on this one, and I believe I took 35 on the other one to the same one. We sell one of these about every day or so routinely week in and week out um, i've got almost nothing into these i've got about 50 cents or less into this one right here we bought them in a huge bulk lot spent quite a few bucks on them but i've got tons of these we've got a couple thousand still to list now the next one here is a bing crosby with orson wells narrating it's from the happy prince it's a walt disney uh, pictures movie basically i took 40 on this one it has two discs in it i paid a dollar for the whole set so 40 bucks back on that dollar. The next one here is a Bluebird. Again, a dollar or less. I think I paid 50 cents for this one. This is I'm in the Army Now, circa World War II. Just the beginning of it, probably about 1941-42 on this one. He's a well-known musician. He has a song about the Titanic as well. So, And that goes way back on this one. Nice, interesting one. I did take 20 bucks basically on this one. Here's a roller skating label. I took $28.50 on this one here. Connellsville, PA, the Hillcrest Rink. I sell these all the time. At least once a day, I'm selling one of these. We just listed another three or 400 of these, and I've got another three or 400 more still to go. Now, this next one is a 50-cent pickup. It was in a bunch of stuff. It has some staining and damage to it. I did take $28.12 on this one, and they paid postage. The person was happy with this one. This one is dated 1934, which is fairly early for these. It's a Chicago to Seattle route. Here's another 78 record. Now, this one is Darktown Strutter's Ball, which was written by Sheldon Brooks, a well-known African-American musician. He penned a ton of good songs, a ton of the earliest jazz, and this actually is recorded by the Dixieland Jazz Band. If you notice, the spelling of jazz is spelled J-A-S-S. -S. That is how it used to be spelled. Now, this song was recorded by pretty much everybody after this point. Fats Weller, even Fats Domino does a version of this exact same song. So it's been around for, geez, over 100 years. It's actually in the Grammy Hall of Fame also, this specific song. It's been known as a jazz classic forever. Little tie-in with this, the original Dixieland Jazz Band is the first group to ever record a record and have a record put out for jazz. And Jimmy Durante had something to do with that. He played in a Another jazz band back in this same time frame it is one of the persons who actually found the original Dixieland jazz band which is kind of coincidental if you don't know who Jimmy Durante is look him up he was a comedian well into the 50s and 60s so a well-known musician as well if you didn't know that so nice good one here I took $67 plus shipping on this one the label looks nice, but unfortunately, the reflection on it kind of messes up the the uh, looks of it here. The gilt on the label is pretty reflective, so unfortunately, on this side, it's a little hard to see. The real record looks much better than that. 
Now, here's one for Dom, Primetime Treasure Hunter. I love a lot of the comic book related stuff. These were actually taken off of a wall, if I remember right, in a kid's room in a 1970s house that it was going up for auction. So just a perfect example. They have wear. They have some issues. It has the original screws. I took $14.50 on these. So I am perfectly happy with that. I have a quarter into each of these right here. Now here's a pen. This was 50 cents, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. It's for Tasty Taters. It's a potato chip advertisement from Finley, Ohio. Now I took 20 bucks on this. I'm fine with that. It's just an old pen. It's probably from the 70s, early 70s. It's not the earliest it could be. The earlier, the better on these. And I would have gotten a little more money if this was 10 years earlier, but I'm happy with 20 bucks for my 50 cent investment. Now, this next one here is a photo booth photo, and I've talked about these many times. I picked up a whole bunch of these. I have maybe 20 cents into each one of these right here. I've got a mess of early photo booth photos. They literally come from a photo booth. You'd get a strip out with four or five photos. This is one of them. I took 50 bucks on two of these to different people also. This is from Honolulu. It's from a sailor that was actually over there during World War II. Really nice example. Here's a magazine it sold for 15 It was up for maybe a week on this one here. I'm not sure who is the selling point to this one. Young Rascals are in this. Um, Paul Revere and the Raiders, the Monkees. And I believe it has a story on the doors, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, the doors are in here as well. So nice example. I paid less than a dollar. I believe I got $0.25 cents to $0.50 cents into this one. I buy them in bulk, so sometimes it's kind of hard to tell on, on the max I paid for it. Another one, 50 bucks I took on this one. Same basic principle. It's another photo booth photo. Now here is a World's Fair trade card from the 1893 Columbian Exposition. I took 135 on this one. This one was in with some postcards. Very happy with this one. This is exactly what is missed by many people, even those looking for postcards. They'll look at the back and say, hey, it's not a postcard, and they'll pass it right on by, even though this is better than most postcards. Again, 135 bucks on this one. Now here's another postcard. This is a real photo postcard, real picture postcard. Paid a dollar for this one. I sold it for $93 and some odd cents, plus they paid for shipping. So I was very happy with this one. This is Rin Tin Tin. This is a scarce German card. So real good sale on this one here. So a dollar and I made over 90 bucks back on it. Piece of sheet music. I paid a quarter on this one. I bought a whole bunch for for a dollar. I sold this one for seventeen fifty. It's not a huge profit on all these sheet musics, but we routinely sell them, and I pay almost nothing for them. The most I've ever paid, I think, for a piece of sheet music is a dollar. So at that price, I really can't go wrong. But again, a quarter for this one, seventeen fifty back. Now this next one is a basically a business card from Knights Templar. I bought some uniform pieces from this exact person, and this was in part of the collection. So I took $55 on this one. What sold this one is the skull and crossbones. I have literally pennies into this. I bought a huge lot of stuff. The rest of it is pretty much gone. I've made a huge profit. I have nothing into this. If I had to set a price a quarter or less on the investment in this specific item, 55 bucks on return, as I said. Now here is a comic book. Now I paid 20 cents for a whole bunch of comic books in a big bulk lot. I bought a box. Now these are just a few of them. I split many of them up into lots of three, four, five, six individual comics. I took 15 on this one here. So I've got less than a dollar into all of these and I got 15 bucks back. Dom Primetime Treasure Hunter would do the same thing. This is something that we've talked about. I always bulk up and can get these cheaper low-budget comic books for almost nothing. Now, there's other ones in here, too. Again, I've got nothing into them. All three of them, I still don't even have a dollar into them. This is an early 50 Swift Arrow by Ajax, and then a Dell comic album with Donald Duck. Now, this is a 15-cent cover, but it is from the 50s, so these don't sell for much. I couldn't sell them on my own. What helped to sell this one here is the giant Superman. Somebody probably wanted that one, and they figured they could do something with the rest of them. So, nice sale on that one. Now here's just a pair of cheap plastic protective goggles. Nothing fancy, nothing anything special. I took 20 bucks on these. I have a dollar into this box here. So, you know, I made 18 bucks back. They paid for shipping as everyone does on my items. So, again, everything I've just showed you and showing you here, I paid a dollar or less for everything. 
I've sold tons of stuff that I paid 5, 10, 15, 20 bucks for or more, but these are just the cheaper items. Just to show you again that you don't have to have a lot of money. You don't have to spend a lot of money. You just have to know something about what you're buying. These are items that people walked by day in and day out until I showed up to find them. Now here's some more cards. Now these three went to the same person. I got 80 bucks a piece out of these. This is Uncle Sam. I think that's a very fair price on these. Some of these are pictured in books. They usually don't sell for this high. Average price on most of the ones, the last three I'm showing you, are around 30 to 40 bucks in all honesty. I took 80 bucks as a bin on these. Again, I price them high most of the time, three times what I expect to get out of them. Now here's another one, anthropomorphic fish and a clam. Really interesting, 80 bucks again on this one. They're from the same company, the same manufacturer. Chances are it was a four card set. I only have three from the set. So for these three cards, I got 80 bucks a piece. Last one here again, 80 bucks a piece on these, 80 bucks out of this one. They went to the same person. So basically 240 bucks, one day, one person, three sales out of it. So really nice one here. These showed up in a large assortment, a large collection I bought of trade cards from the 20s, 30s, 40s, and 50s, and they had some earlier ones like this mixed up in there too. If I see, say, Three Stooges by Fleer from the 1959 set, many times you run into stuff that goes way back from people that collected those. Trade cards in general have been around for a very long time, sports-related, themed, actress-related, show-related. All of those have been around since the 1870s or even a hair before that. So these type of things show up in multitudes of different collections, whether they're paper collectors, trade card collectors, advertising collectors. I can find these at estate sales, local live auctions as well. Plus, I have pickers that pick these up for us too. So, But that's what I have for you today. Well, there you are. Hopefully that gave you some ideas and some thoughts. If you enjoyed the video, please hit that like button down below. You can also hit the bell icon to be notified if I post new content or go live. Subscribe and tell a friend.